Thank you very much for introducing. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody, Distin distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Masa Ichimura uh, from uh, Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. On behalf of uh, the Commission, uh, or ASCAP in short, as well as uh, for the Center uh, for Alleviation of Poverty through Sustainable Agriculture, or CAPSA in short, uh, it gives me great pleasure uh, to be with you in this uh, very important uh, forum. And I think this is a very timely event, and I'm very excited to be with you. Well, uh, since this morning, uh, we have been listening uh, about the story, like uh, ensuring food and nutrition and nutrition security uh, continue to be uh, one of the uh, fundamental challenge uh, facing uh, our human being. I don't think I have to repeat all the figures mentioned uh, in this uh, morning, but uh, well, certainly uh, it is our perception that much of the burden of addressing this uh, challenge falls on the uh, agriculture and the food sector. Agriculture sector also present the uh, single largest employer in, uh, in the world and also uh, uh, in Asian Pacific as well. Uh, certainly uh, indispensable component as a driver for sustainable development in our region. Uh, sustainable development means we have economic, social, and environmental components, and we have to be balanced, and uh, we have to make progress hand in hand. It is, uh, well, uh, agriculture is providing livelihood to 40% of the population of our planet, and uh, largest sources of income and job for poor rural households should not be treated as just a food producing machine. Well, getting to the issue of resilience, we have so much risks, and the risks are increasing. Everyone talk about climate change, and natural disaster, land degradation, posing serious impediment for the agricultural sector at the local, national, and global level. <sighs> Higher temperature, rise in sea level, and extreme weather events <sighs> related to climate change are threatening not just the sector's ability to produce uh, sufficient and safe food, but also it provides great challenge for our existence as a whole. On top of that, we should also consider political risks and social stability which add up uh, another set of risks and uh, uncertainties we need, to, uh, we need resilience against. I understand our fellow panelists will talk more about you know, resilience related to health and nutrition, which is also quite important. All right, building resilience to all such risks and Our response is urgent tasks for everybody. We have great hopes, however. The 20, uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, including the Sustainable Development Goals, representing a plan of action for people, planet, 
and uh, prosperity anonymously adopted by the global community in September 2015, which, of course, includes SDG 1 and 2, as you know, about poverty and hunger. But the true value of SDGs lie with the emphasis on the undivided, interrelated, and universal approach. Even the goals are presented in 17 different goals. The emphasis is on the integrated approach rather than sexual fragmentary ap approach. Gives us more hopes and more chances to work together to address common challenges by getting out of silos. This is important and also mentioned by several speakers in the morning. We are all guided to seek for win-win synergy and highlights on multiple benefit and taking holistic approach. I think this is my main message and it is more than evident the transformation of the global food and agriculture system is central to achieving many of the uh, goals beyond just SDG 1 and 2. It is almost at about everything. And this is a great opportunity that experts and policymakers, even from agricultural sector, agriculture and food sectors, now ready to work together and join the global quest of sustainable development and redefine their effort in the new context of holistic policy requirement for national and international strategic development. Well, I just touch upon two kind of innovation. The first one is policy innovation. And uh, we all know that uh, policy innovation is quite important to make sure that we have integrated and uh, holistic approach with cooperation of all the ministries, relevant ministries. So uh, we recognize in many of the Asia Pacific countries, they are taking the first step to set up some kind of inter-ministerial coordination mechanism. I think this is the biggest achievement for the first two years in the uh, implementation of sustainable development goals. And we have to continue to make sure that all the different issues, even related to resilient, sustainable economic, social, and environmental development, should be addressed in the you know, uh, integrated manner. And next important policy innovation is a multi-stakeholder participation. And uh, I think this is also the matter addressed in the many of the speakers this morning. Of course, I can continue about talking about other innovations, like uh, financial innovations or technological innovations, but uh, I don't think I have much time uh, to do that. Then I just uh, wish to conclude my remark by sharing my optimism about the potential of this Asia Pacific region to you know, achieve sustainable development in the you know, uh, way of enhancing partnership or participation and encouraging a lot of innovation in many sectors. Thank you very much.